Hi friends, it's Mr. B, pretending to be Brother Mike today, and we're going to talk about St. Francis, and he is a Catholic version of Johnny Appleseed. He was a do-gooder. He spread joy and sunshine wherever he went, and he loved God and would talk to people and praise them for their talents. He also loved nature, and he would preach sometimes to the animals, and he was very well respected by individuals in the Catholic community and the animals seem to love and care for him too. I have a book today. It's called Little Francis and the Wolf and it's written by Julie Hanna and it goes like this. Throughout the land of Gubbio everything was peaceful? I don't think so. A ferocious wolf that had no name was driving everyone nearly insane. Would that wolf eat them? Yes, he might. So naturally they stayed out of sight. You can see that they were afraid of the wolf and they were hiding in the castle. Francis said, something has to be done about this wolf that's on the run. So out he went, unarmed and unafraid. Francis searched as he walked and prayed. You can see him outside with nature. The wolf growled when he saw Francis, and each growl was louder than the other. Can you do that, friends? Can you growl like a wolf? Francis looked at him and said, Come here, my brother wolf. Why do you cause so much harm and fear? It's your wolfy purpose to bring peace here. Now the wolf looks kind of bad and sad. Bowing his head, the wolf was serene. I'm sorry, he said, for being mean. We should never be mean to our friends, boys and girls. We should treat everybody by the golden rule. Treat them with respect. Come, Brother Wolf, Francis said. Let's go apologize to the people of Gubbio. The people said, Can this really be? Is this the ferocious wolf we see? They couldn't believe it. The wolf was tame and nice. Yes, said Francis, he's sorry to the core, and he won't hurt anyone else anymore. And those of you who have ears here, you'll be forgiven as you forgive. So the people of the town of Gubbio did forgive the wolf. On that fine day in Gubbio, the story didn't end. From that day on, Brother Wolf was everyone's friend. He had been forgiven. What a lucky guy. Looks like he's eating and he's kind of happy that his tummy's happy because it's full of food. Then the people gave him food to eat whenever he passed by. Why was he so mean? He was hungry, that's why. So the wolf was only looking for food. That's why he was chasing everybody. A long time later, Brother Wolf died. And that was really sad. All his friends and Gubbio cried. 
It's sad when you lose a pet. And Francis was sad too when his pet wolf died. Francis too left Gubbio. His work never ceased. He would continue to be an instrument of peace. So he went on to the next town after his wolf friend died to spread the word of God. Francis thanked God for there is none other who could change a ferocious wolf into a little brother. And Francis loved God so much that the light of God would shine through him and everybody could recognize that. And that is the end of the story. Here is a picture of our friend, Julia Hanna, who illustrated, I'm sorry, who wrote the book. And this is the illustrator, a poor Claire nun named Sister Amato. I hope you enjoyed the story of St. Francis. And remember to be kind to people and animals. Until next time, be an instrument of a peace like St. Francis was. Bye-bye.